Hello everyone. We are starting with the third variant of June 2012 yearly past papers review. Yes, this is a video on pure math P1. Now let's look at the very first question. Prove the identity tan square theta minus sin square theta is a product of tan square and sin square. Looks strange. Tan square theta can be written as sin square over cos square. Now there were two options. Either I can take common or I can take LCM. I think first thing first, use common sense to take common. Now I can comfortably take LCM. 1 minus cos square over cos square theta. But 1 minus cos square is sin square theta. So sin square into sin square over cos square. So therefore this comes out to be tan square theta sin square theta. Now in some books you might have seen this identity and it ends up with a slight variation that is tan square theta minus sin square theta is identical to sin power 4 theta over cos square theta. It's the same thing. If I multiply this sign with this sign, that becomes sine power 4 theta. Okay. So just to give you an idea that you might next time come across the same identity. The left hand side would be the same, but the right hand side would be different. Second part. Use this result to explain why tangent theta is greater than sine theta for theta between 0 and 90. Now let's think for a second. 0 to 90, first quadrant, sine, cos, tan, they all are positive. That means if sine, cos, tan are positive, their squares would also be positive. So therefore, sine is positive, tangent is positive, sine square means square of sine theta, that is positive, tan square theta is positive. That means the right hand side of the equation is positive. If the right hand side is positive, the left hand side should also be positive in order for it to be identical. How can the left hand side be positive? There is a subtraction sign. That means tangent square should be greater than sine square. Tan square minus sine square is positive. In other words, tan square theta is greater than sine square theta. This will not be true if it's any other quadrant. It could be it could not be for some quadrant and within the quadrant there is also a possibility. We are not discussing that right now because that would make things look difficult. For right now the examiner has made it easy for you. First quadrant all the ratios are positive. The squares are positive. Right hand side should be positive. So should the left hand side be. How can the left hand side be positive? There is a minus sign. If tan square and sin square are equal, will it be positive? No, it will be zero. If tan square is lesser than sin square, will it be positive? No. What is the only option left? Tan square should be greater than sin square. Therefore, that is the only condition in which it will be positive. A very conceptual question. Second question on binomial. A simple question just so that you don't forget what binomial was. The first three terms in the expansion and ascending powers of x are such and such. Find the values of the constant a and b. 1 minus 2x, the whole thing square. That is simple a minus b whole square. a square minus 2ab plus b square. 1 plus ax raised to power of 6. How many terms do I need? I think three terms are perfectly fine. I need the constant. I need the x. I need the x square term. 6c1 using a calculator. 6c2 using a calculator. In the second part, it becomes a square x squared. Now selective multiplication. Three terms of the first bracket, three terms of the second bracket. According to the counting principle of probability, three multiplied by three is nine possibilities, but I'm not looking into nine. I'm just looking up till x square. Therefore, one multiplied with all the three terms, one plus 6ax plus 15a square x square minus 4x multiplied with only the first and the second term. I love vertically adding it up because I can see exactly which term will be added to which. 
add up all the terms and what do you get you get 1 plus 6a minus 4 coefficient of x 15a square minus 24a plus 4 that's the coefficient of x square comparing coefficient 1 equals to 1 6a minus 4 equals to minus 1 from here you will find the value of a you plug in the next one you'll find the value of b so that's how you find a that's how you find b binomial selective multiplication comparing coefficient in any chapter in any chapter do visualize do write down on the side while we are practicing what are the concepts that are being involved so one is done three is done what's the next one four is easy five the diagram shows part of the curve crossing the y-axis at point A. How can I find the coordinate of A? When x is 0, I'll find the coordinate of A. Uh, now it's again volume and this time it's rotated about the y-axis. So when the volume is rotated about the y-axis, your limits would be on the y-axis and your expression will be in terms of y. Cannot apply chain rule. Cannot apply chain rule because it's not a linear expression. So you have to multiply it out a minus b whole square a square minus 2 a b plus b square use indices take all the terms up patience is a virtue especially in math if you want to score an a star on an a do not hurry do not be uh, do not try to save the environment by writing on less pieces of paper and saving some trees right now you have to save your grade in order to save your grade write everything step by step so therefore, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power in all the terms. And after this much of simplification, uh, I don't feel the need to take anything common out. I'll simply use a calculator after simplification. I'll use a calculator, plug in the values and be happy and get the answer. So question 5 is done. Question number 7. The curve intersects the x-axis at A. When it intersects the x-axis, y-coordinate is 0. The tangent to the curve at A intersects the y-axis at C. Okay, let me first find what is A. That is y equals to 0. And then let me have a look at this one. So therefore... 5 is equals to 2x plus 1. Therefore, 2x is equals to 4x is equals to 2. Now, let's differentiate. After differentiation, I'll plug in the x coordinate of a, which is 2. I'll find the gradient of the tangent at a. I'll find the equation of the tangent at a. And then what? I make it intersect the intersect the x-axis, and I'll find this is the equation of tangent. Equation of tangent intersecting x-axis. So I'll find the coordinates of C. So coordinate geometry questions are usually nice and simple and harmless. Uh, you just have to go uh, step by step. Can't hurry into this. Expect the unexpected answers will come out to be in fractions. So you have A, you have C, distance AC, distance formula, basically derived from the Pythagoras theorem. And uh, over here, I think I'm going to leave the answer in the exact form. I can leave it like this. This is uh, root of 164 and square root of uh, 25 is 1 fifth. So I can leave the answer as this. I can write the answer as four significant figures and then final answer as 3 SF. This question is also done. Question number 8, nothing special. Question number 9. Equation of curve is given. Uh, sorry, equation of curve is being asked. The second derivative is given. The curve has a maximum point at 2, 12. Now we know, second derivative, if I integrate, I get the first derivative. First derivative, I integrate, I get the equation of the curve. That is y in terms of x. Now, whenever you integrate, you always have a constant of integration, which needs to be evaluated. So first thing first, I'm integrating it. 
I get a constant of integration C. Look at the second line. The curve has a maximum point at 2 minus 12. What does it mean? Maximum point, minimum point, stationary point, it happens when y prime equals to 0. In other words, when x is equals to 2, y is equals to 12, that is the coordinate itself. That belongs to the original equation. When x is equals to 2, y prime is 0, that belongs to the first derivative. Since we are dealing with the first derivative, I'll plug in x is 2, y prime is 0, therefore c comes out to be 8. Hence, this is the equation for the first derivative. So this equation over here, this is for the first derivative. Integrate it again. And this time, I'll have y in terms of x. So how would I evaluate the new constant of integration? I'll plug in x and y. So when x is 2, y is 12. Use your calculator, use your mind, use common sense, simplify. And you will find the value of k. So value of k, let's see what does it come out to be. Therefore, k comes out to be a fraction, 1 1 third or 4 third. Hence, they are asking for the equation of the curve. And this is the equation of the curve done in two steps. So that is question number 9. And one more question, that's question number, the second part of question number 9, my bad. A point P moves along the curve in such a way that the x coordinate is increasing at 0.05 units per second, dx by dt. Find the rate at which y is increasing, y is changing, uh, dy by dt. When x is equal to 3, stating whether the y coordinate is increasing or decreasing. It's a simple rule. When they will give us a rate of change as positive, that means that's an increasing rate of change. If it's negative, that means it's a decreasing rate of change. Or they can use the word decreasing rate of change and we have to apply a minus sign. So we already know what is dy by dx. All we have to do is to plug in the value of x is equals to 3. So we will find a particular value of the rate of change of y with respect to x. Then it's the same old story. dy by dt, dy by dx, dx by dt. This is minus 10. This is 0 0.05. This is coming out to be negative. What does it mean? X is increasing. Yes, but Y is decreasing. So that finishes the uh, video on the third variant of June 2012 P1 P paper. Take care.